Vodafone is one of the most vocal supporters of Open RAN's prospects in cellular networks, and the Telecom Infra Project, or TIP, is one of the main industry bodies working to help network operators with their Open RAN plans. So to get an update on where we're at with Open RAN in early 2023, who better to talk to than Iago Tenorio, Vodafone Fellow and Director of Network Architecture at the Operator, and also the Chairman at TIP. Iago, great to talk with you again. Thanks for joining us. So we're a few years into the Open RAN era now. Uh, what's the state of play with Vodafone's Open RAN strategy? And how do you see the current state of the Open RAN ecosystem and its maturity? Is it set to play a bigger role in network operator plans in 2023? Mm, okay, thank you, Ray, and my pleasure to be here with you. So as you know, in Vodafone, we measure the state of play by the progress that we're making with our biggest deployment, which is the UK. And that's, I think it's going very well. So we always said we would um, start with the urban areas before the end of 2022 calendar year, and we did. And we also said that before Mobile World Congress, hopefully we'll be able to integrate massive MIMO for the first time. So, so um, stay tuned because we'll give an update during Mobile World Congress on that, but things are going well. So expect us to actually deliver what we said we would. Um, and I think that's important because once you get open run to urban areas and once you integrate massive MIMO into the system and, and you know, you can demonstrate that it performs well, I think it's an important milestone for proving the maturity of the system that should mark, you know, probably 2023 as an inflection point where we can see some volumes deployed in, you know, more projects. Now, also importantly, I think recently we announced a few things um, while we were at Fuse in October um, that are important for the ecosystem. So very relevant, the announcement of the work that we uh, we did with Nokia, that they are finally embracing the open run architecture and they are working on, on delivering the first uh, system from Nokia that will be fully open run compatible according to our specification. Also very important news for the ecosystem when it comes to silicon. So you saw Marvel is working both with Nokia, fueling that work as well as with Samsung. Uh, Qualcomm is working with Mavenir. That is, I think, very important. It talks about also the maturity uh, of the ecosystem and the momentum. And I think last but not least, the other thing that is important is system integration, I think, is getting addressed. So both in harmonization of testing as well as simplification, um, I think we're making progress. And you saw also a note that we published with Docomo that we are working with them in both fronts. We are also finding a very good collaboration uh, from TIP and the Ordan Alliance. So I think that also talks about, you know, progress. All in all, we always said our plan is to have 30% of Europe rolled out with Open RAM by 2030. And um, that's still the plan. We're progressing to that. That will be fueled by an RFQ that should see the light in 2024. So everything that we are doing now is leading us to that. It's going very well. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so uh, lots of collaboration uh, in the industry. And, and as ever, you know, the supply side and the developers are always looking for a steer uh, from the network operators about what they need. and. Um, with that in mind, of course, you know, five major European operators signed an uh, Open RAN MOU in 2021, uh, and Vodafone was one of those operators. What kind of progress has been made there? I mean, what has been the outcome of that collaboration so far? I think the most important outcome of that collaboration was and still is the specification of what we call Open RAN. And that is not like a uh, like a single document that was you know released um, you know in 2021 and then um, stays there. It actually goes you know through different releases and it gets updated as we learn more as the ecosystem evolves. Now this is instrumental and this is probably the most important outcome because it avoids fragmentation. And I think if it wasn't for this clarity, I don't think 
we would have seen, you know, things like the ones I talked about, like Nokia coming or the uh, silicon players also coming to boost the performance. This kind of clarity on the specification is an enabler, and I think it has greatly contributed to, to that progress and to the ecosystem. So that is, I think, the single most important thing and is continuing. So that's a live document, as I said, and we will see new releases. It'll always get, you know, updated so that suppliers can get the clarity they need and they're not, you know, finding a fragmentation on the ecosystem and they're pulled into different directions by different operators and therefore they don't know exactly who to listen to or, or what they should manufacture. That would be probably the, the biggest enemy that Open Run would have at this stage. The other thing that I think it can be useful and we uh, may see more of is operators talking with a single voice, answering the questions from the industry or from governments or from regulators that are still outstanding, um, you know, either for clarifying you know, wrong perceptions, or if you let me, fighting fake news or, or fighting the toxic lobby that is just, you know, throwing negative messages into it. I think it'll be very useful um, if we can use this MOU, you know, for operators to answer those questions. Okay, the, the toxic lobby. I expect to see a T-shirt with that logo emblazoned on it at MWC. Um, but uh, I, I think, uh, you know, from a neutral perspective, there's a lot of uh, companies still out there, you know, wondering why things haven't moved on a, a little bit faster than they have. Uh, I mean, what do you think could be done to accelerate developments in the open RAN sector? What would help to move things along faster for, for all involved? Okay, so I, I think the progress is probably reasonable, you know, to the scale of, you know, the change, but but nevertheless, I think things that will help us progress farther and faster. The first one, undoubtedly, is the silicon. And, uh, and we, you know, we, we are starting to see some movements like those from Marvel and uh, from Qualcomm. Uh, I think we'll see more. And, and I think, you know, the next thing that we need to do is to clarify inline acceleration versus look aside. Do they both have a role to play or, you know, is one better than the other. Uh, once we clarify that, having um, a good acceleration system will help Open Run overcome the performance of incumbent architecture by 2024 or before 2024. Uh, that's kind of my estimation or my bet, if you may. So talking about advancing and talking about progress, what I'm saying is we will see Open RAM performing better and more efficiently than incumbent architecture by 2024, thanks to the silicon and thanks to the silicon players that are working in this space. I think that's, that if this happens, it's going to be a phenomenal progress. And I think even the incumbent architecture will probably start, you know, converging into an off the shelf and computing for basement. So that's one thing. Um, uh, the other thing is, of course, we will want to see more projects. So more operators deploying in more markets. Ourselves, we are preparing some new projects before that RFQ that I mentioned in 2024 sees the like to make sure that Open Run is perceived as mature, credible, and can play you know, a role on that RFQ. So the other operators um, may have a slightly different timing on procurement, but I think that having more projects ongoing will only help um, scaling the ecosystem up. Um, and in that respect, I think it's also about exploring new use case that can be important. So for instance, run setting remains untapped and we may actually have something to say about that in Mobile World Congress, but open run as an architecture is naturally fitting the run setting a scenario much better than any other because you can do things that you cannot do with incoming architecture like for instance that geographical split that is almost mandatory to operate a run share network with incoming architecture can actually go away if you think of you know operators running their own software in containers you know in a common infrastructure you can actually pepper pot the sites and have a grid that is much easier to optimize. As an example, another example could be MPN. So Open Run 
has not made you know a, a, a great impact on MPN just yet. However, the potential is huge for for actually open run to re re revolutionize uh, that space. So I think we may see some of that, and I think that that will help. As I said, it's important that we keep fighting the wrong perceptions. I think we will do that. Um, and I, I strongly suggest you come to our booth and you check some of our uh, proof points. So we do have a sizable deployment already in the UK. So when it comes to, for instance, energy and the kind of misleading perceptions that Open Run is less efficient, well, come and, and, and watch the facts and uh, we'll show you the energy efficiency of the open brand system in operation compared to um, incumbent architecture and you can draw your own conclusions. So we, we need to keep kind of clarifying and we need to keep working on the messaging so that people, you know, get the real fact and not like, you know, a biased kind of message from interested parties. We also need to keep working on system integration and that's very important because we need to make this affordable for tier two, tier three operators who may not actually be willing to system integrate themselves. So I think we're making progress, but more needs to be done in, in that space. And maybe last but not least, we need to keep working in ways to expand the hardware ecosystem because particularly for the radios that mean the bigger share on the cost um, of an open, open run system or any run system. That is the very reason why we did open run in the first place to let more suppliers in. And I know there's been some, not criticism, but kind of questioning that, well, but there's only big names playing here. So the Samsungs, the Nokias, or even in Silicon, the Qualcomm's or the Marvell's and of course, Intel. Um, so where are the new players? Well, I think eventually that will happen. And the most interesting place where that needs to happen is on the radio hardware, because that's where the cost is. And that's where you need the most diversity. So uh, I think expanding that will be probably the next step. I think Silicon has a super big role to play in facilitating that. And I think we're making a lot of progress in that area. So, so I'm yeah looking forward to that. Okay, excellent. Uh, really clear messages for the sector there. Uh, now, one aspect of Open RAN that's starting to capture more and more attention is the RAN Intelligent uh, Controller or RIC. It's regarded by many as a key enabler of Open RAN innovation. Um, do you think that's uh, correct? Is that a, the right way to look at the RIC? And you know, are we at a point where we're ready to see RIC platforms be deployed in networks as soon as this year, or is it still too early? I think it's it's correct in that is i think it's the ultimate destination <laughs> so uh rig is where you get to once you um you know you you've managed to do everything else right uh rig is a platform and an architecture that it'll be very difficult if not impossible for the incoming architecture to actually match so eventually open run you know will be a big enabler of that platform and a lot of innovation will be unleashed. So yes, that's right. But RIC is not the only innovation that Open Run enables, and is not even like like the main one or the most immediate one. So before that happens, we'll see. As I was saying, imagine um, an off-the-shelf um, silicon server that performs better than incumbent traditional PBU. Uh, well, I mean, that's not only important, there is a lot of innovation related to that and a change in the ecosystem. Um, as I was saying also before, imagine giving way to new radios um, and imagine the radios of Open Run overtaking in performance and efficiency the ones from incumbent run. That is actually possible. And I think we'll be hearing about that, you know, in, in the, say, you know, not to distant future. So there is a lot of innovation that is very useful, that is needed and is enabled by Open Run that we're going to see happening in the next 12 months um, and is equally important for the ecosystem and for the operators and for the industry. 
Now, eventually, Rig will come and enable you know new new things. Uh, there's been um, trials and interim results as significant as the ones we could see from Cohiri, for instance. So their approach to a scheduler is radically different, and they they were able to demonstrate significant spectral efficiency gains, which are of course are I mean are absolutely stunning. So is that the ultimate destination? Yes. Is that super relevant for open run? Yes. But make no mistake, it's not the only one. Uh, there are many more innovations that are going to happen sooner than that and are, are happening now. In terms of timing, will we see rig kind of commercially deployed in volumes in 2023? No, I don't think so. I think it's too early. I think you know, in terms of timing, it's too early to say we may see it in 24, 25. It'll eventually come, but we need to make sure that we get everything else right and we enable many more kind of innovation fronts before we get to the rig. That's my view. We need to sort out the system integration and make it available for everybody. We need to work on automation as well. And then eventually rig will come and make a big difference, but it'll probably be in the second half of this decade is my view. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, fantastic insights there. Yago, thanks very much for joining us and uh, look forward to catching up again soon at MWC and throughout the rest of the year. So thanks very much. My pleasure, Ray. Thank you for having me.